Hey, welcome to this series of Power Talk. I'm super excited to be sharing with you someone who I've known absolutely for years. He is an executive strategist. He is a power player in the industry of disruptive technology. He is the president of Kajabi. And I want to share with you a little bit about Jonathan Cronstadt, of course, Jay Cron, to those of us that know him really well, a little bit about his background. First of all, he's been in the disruptive technology space for many years and worked with some of the most powerful marketing houses and tech companies that are household names that any of you would probably know, I'm sure. Uh, in his off time, when he's not out there being just dangerously strategic and launching power brands across the globe, he is actually at home hanging out with his amazing wife, Nicole, and they have such a wonderful puppy dog uh, named Stella. And uh, he is a fierce collector of only the finest vodkas in his freezer. And when he's not on tech, he has his moleskin notebook with his pen and a cup of Starbucks. So I'm super excited to welcome you into our world and meet Jay Cron. So th thank you so much. And I have to tell you, Kelly, what's so funny is getting a chance to interact with your audience. It's like hearing you read this bio, I start to get excited. And then I realize it's just me that you're talking about. Like I was like, oh, wow, this, this guy sounds like he's going to be really cool. And you're like, oh, it's just Jay Cron. I'm like, oh, man, you know, that guy sounded interesting. Like I would have asked him so many things about probably vodka and, you know, having a small dog you treat like a child, life in Southern California, you know, all of those kind of things. But needless to say, Kelly and I have been friends for a very long time, and I am thrilled to be here. I am thrilled to have you here, and I'm so excited because we're doing some collaborations and some strategic partnerships, and we'll talk about those in a second. But, you know, what I want to do is uh, really talk about how you've been able to disrupt the entire marketplace of all things business and entrepreneurship, uh, which is not an easy task, in, and really create this level playing field for entrepreneurs and business owners to be able to launch their programs, launch their genius zone, and really be able to grow and scale their company. And here's what's really wild is that I remember, I mean, we both came out of the mortgage industry, right? Way back in the day. Uh, but about I don't know, maybe it was 10 or 12 years ago, I was doing consulting for a Fortune 100 and they were redoing their LMS, their learning management system, like a, a platform. And uh, they invested $2 million for this one area in their learning and development. And now here you are with Kajabi creating this level playing field for everyone to be able to you know, have access. So. We just talk a second about Kajabi and oh, I um, the amazing SaaS company that my, it is. My absolute favorite thing to talk yeah. about, and it's something too that I think for, for your individuals that are listening, it has never been a more exciting time to be able to leverage technology that was previously only available in gilded ivory towers and giant corporate budgets, and having access to it today has never been easier. And at Kajabi, you know, part of Kenny's vision for the company has always been that the technology really should fade into the background. That so often as an industry, we're focusing on the technology and the features and what the technology does. And really, when technology is perfect, you don't even realize you're using it because you're using it for the purposes you have, which none of you woke up this morning and thought, boy, do I wish I had better behavioral segmentation in my email autoresponder. It's, I just wish I could communicate with people more authentically. So having that technology fade into the background has been something that's been in our DNA since day one. And you brought up LMSs, which I think it always cracks me up because it's one of the only corporate acronyms where LMS actually has the word mess in it. And it's normally because that's what it feels like to use something like that. See, LMSs were really born out of the days of software when people were designing huge enterprise albatross platforms that required armies of IT people for job security to really do something that today you don't need any of those people to do. Just like what Gmail and Google Apps did for email, which used to require your own servers and rooms full of people to maintain it, Kajabi has really done for LMS or educational technology. And really for us, something that we've talked about is this idea of knowledge commerce, which is it's no longer about a learning management system or some type of corporate compliance type platform that you're not enjoying engaging with. Yeah. It's more technology that's designed to enrich your life, educate you on your passion, educate you on whatever is important to you in your job, in your career, in your path to entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and be able to do it in a way that you don't need anybody else to help you. You don't need an IT guy. You don't need a, a giant corporate budget to do it. You just need a willingness to find the market you want, serve them in a way that's impactful for them, mm -hmm. and you know the rest will be history. The rest will be history. And, and there's a new history being created, right? I really love that uh, 
you, you know, you brought up knowledge business and there was information business. And now with Google, I mean, you can Google anything that you want. So it's really not about that anymore. It's about really taking that knowledge and harvesting it, it into a platform in a way where people can consume it and they get the results. I'm really big about, uh, of course, any behavioral driven tech. I am a techie at heart, mm -hmm. uh, but really being able to serve that end client. And so what do you think it is that causes, I'll just say entrepreneurs, right, um, to get stuck? I really believe that, you know, as an entrepreneur, uh, it is your, you know, it is just really your job, your divine destiny, if you will, to step into being the powerhouse CEO that you are. And people are afraid to do that sometimes. For a lot of reasons. Where do you think they get tech stuck on, let's say, the tech side? No doubt about it. Uh, you know, there's a multitude of ways that you as an entrepreneur can choose to get stuck if you want to, but more often than not, it's just simply a perspective shift. One of the things that I see a lot of people struggle with, especially in this idea of sharing your knowledge for some type of an income stream, is really, well, why would anyone buy from me? It's already on YouTube, it's already on Google, it's already on blogs. It can be found out there. And I think it's really something of the nuance between information versus knowledge and knowledge is information that is organized and actionable you know the information revolution google's vision of just getting the world's information online really under delivered on its promise you know we were sort of promised this utopia of being three keystrokes away from all the ways to improve our lives and yet here i am still googling the latest diet methodology even though i can find all of them it really puts more of pressure on me to now i have to sift sort sleuth qualify, I need to figure out if the person I found is credible, if they really are telling the truth, if they really are offering something of value. If anything, I'm more overwhelmed and stressed out than I was before all of that information was available. And you know, Tony Robbins says, you know, we are um, drowning in information and starving for wisdom. Right. And I think that Kajabi really is a catalyst for allowing people to understand that the reason we buy is not because of what we're buying, it's because of who we're buying it from, the connection we have with them, and the confidence that they can get us from our current state to our desired state. So I think you as an entrepreneur, the thing that is so freeing is let go of this idea of, well, I'm not new or I'm not different or what I'm teaching is already out there or what I'm teaching has already been taught because the reality of it is that's the case for all of us. What's new isn't true and what's true probably isn't that new. So it's really about leaning into your personality, your story, the transformation you've experienced and viewing that as a far greater leverage point as you step into becoming the CEO of your brand versus believing in my information has to be different. So that's a big sticking point yeah. that for us people get stuck all the time. It's like, oh, well, everybody else is already teaching this. It's like, yeah, but, but you're not. And that's, that's the right. point. Or your twist on it, right? Your unique experience, the things that you've done. And especially for women, uh, what I see often is that they have these amazing skill sets and they'll go into starting a new business or launching into, you know, perhaps an area where they are absolutely magnificent and just get the clients studying results. And all of a sudden, uh, ladies, you get amnesia. And all of a sudden it's like, but I'm going to do this new thing. So I feel like I have to start all over again. And it really keeps people from stepping into this, this powerhouse CEO position that I'm so passionate about. And what I dig about what you do, I've been a Kajabi user for a very long time. And what I dig about, not just Kajabi as a piece of technology, because I mean, your culture here is incredible and the people here are amazing, uh, but that you make it so easy, this all in one, basically platform interface where I can have sales page, I can have email, I can have member area, I can have all of these pieces. And so giving an entrepreneur the tech is one piece. What do you think it is? Just tech aside for a second. What is it that keeps people stuck? What is it that, you know, they have to break through that glass ceiling, if you will? Well, I, I think if, if there was one thing for me that comes up more often than not, and we see this all the time at Kajabi, you know, let's say hypothetically, you've gotten past the inner game of, okay, it is me, it is my story, and it's not the uniqueness of the information. So now you're at the place where it's like, I'm ready to take action. The next place you're going to get stuck is when you're playing business rather than doing business. 
Before technology, it was much harder to disguise it because playing business back then would be, I'm going to start a business. So I'm going to go to the office supply store. I'm going to buy color-coded folders. I'm going to buy little tab dividers. I'm going to buy pens of 37 shades. I'm going to buy every size of post-it note. And you're going to come back and say, all right, I'm ready to go into business. It's like, well, no, you're not. All you did is really buy a bunch of office supplies. Today, it's gotten a lot more devious in being able to hide from the actual business mm. by playing business. So a lot of people will hide in what I call tech purgatory. It's like, well, no, I'm trying 14 autoresponders to see which one I like best. And then I'm going to figure out the 12 CRMs that I can tie those 14 autoresponders to. And then I'm going to design a three-year-long automated follow-up sequence to make sure that when someone starts with me, the next three years of their life are scripted out. And if you look at the business that way, you'll never get anything done. Like, oh, wait. But then let me look at everyone else and see what <laughs> they're doing and all of the other platforms that they're using. And maybe I should have those baker's dozens of tools also. You're, you're totally right. That's actually the third step of getting stuck. So, yeah. you know, you've got the second step where it's like, okay, now I'm going to get tech stuck and I'm just going to play with every platform right. imaginable, connect all of them together and hope for the best. After... God forbid you then relegate yourself to one tech stack and you're ready to start the business. Then the next belief is, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to go and I'm going to sign up for everybody's stuff. I'm going to try every single method and I'm going to cobble all of them together. So if you look at every stage, it's really just continual lack of belief in stepping in to be the CEO you're meant to be letting the technology fade into the background and complexifying your business when you have the revenue to support it. Kajabi today is exponentially more complex as an organization than we were when we started, and it's because we have the team to support that complexity. It wasn't that Kenny is still running around trying to figure out all of the systems that we're going to connect together. It just changes, and if you honor that and do it in the right season, you can leverage it rather than getting buried by it. So let me clarify on complexity, right? So first of all, it's a very robust platform, uh, but it is not complicated. Uh, you know, a Porsche, uh, you know, carbon graphite interior and zero to a hundred and something crazy and, you know, 2.5 seconds. I'm a car girl. Uh, you know, it's complex, mm -hmm. but all I have to do is get on, get in and, and turn the key, it. right? And take off. And I think that's one of the beauties of it. You know, I think entrepreneurs make this really fatal mistake where if I can just stay in the, let me stay in the business of doing this tech, this piece, let me figure out this program, this way to scale, this audience, uh, then they can avoid actually making money, mm -hmm. creating a six, seven, eight, nine figure business, and really stepping out there and serving their clients at the highest level possible. So they avoid, and you can probably relate to this, avoid staying in these highest value activities that are actually going to get the results because it's scary. Mm -hmm. So, well, and I, think, I think you brought up a good point though that. that I want to talk about, and this yeah. is one of the reasons why. We're very excited to be doing things with Kelly. One of the reasons we're excited to be in front of you here is you've got to be very careful when you choose your mentors. You've got to be very careful who you're going to give access to your brain, your plan, and how you're approaching it. And this is another one of those things where I'll end up meeting somebody who jumped into a bunch of Facebook groups and they're like, well, I'm not using Kajabi because I wanted to multivariate split test this page with 37 variables using a Taguchi methodology. And I'm like, I know what all those words mean too, but have you ever sold anything online? And they're like, no, I, I haven't sold anything yet. I'm like, yeah, because you're still trying to work on that page. Mm -hmm. So it's really something where you'll see people choose that mentor very haphazardly. They're going to go into a bunch of groups and say, like, oh, well, someone told me I should use this, or someone told me I should use that, or someone told me I should connect these 14 things together. The first question you should ask whenever you're listening to anyone's advice is, how have you built your business? What have you done? What results have you driven? And that's one of the reasons why we love working with Kelly because number one, she goes to where is the impact? Where are you going to drive the greatest results for your greatest effort? Which is why focusing on that inner game, stepping into a CEO mentality is going to be extremely important. But after that, really being clear on staying in that zone and staying in your area of impact is going to be key because everywhere you look, Somebody who probably isn't doing as big of things as you're already doing is going to try to pull you off course into some type of distraction. It's just the way that social media works today. Yeah, so true. I mean, look, at the end of the day, you can make money or you can make excuses, but you can't have both. And so I didn't know origami, kaguchi, ka blah, blah, and still closed over a billion dollars in sales face to face, on the phone, in meetings. And from my stages. Which, and just so, to be clear, even after taxes, if you quit smoking, <laughs> cut back on your bar budget, a billion dollars, you can live on that. We have to cut back on the bar budget? Well, I mean, <laughs> No, but seriously, right? So it's like, it's like, wow, everything today is so much easier than when we were even starting out. Uh, and we are wiser today for that. 
And yet, you know, people get locked up in not either wanting to take that extra step to just simplify. Because I think busy feels good, right? Busy feels productive. So you can be broke and busy, or you can be hyper productive in high value activities and be profitable. And, um, and Kajabi gets you there. So I'm and just so speaking excited. about busyness. I yeah. would actually give credit to Tim Ferriss. He actually yeah. said today, based on the technology we now have access to, busyness is actually the new form of laziness because what it is is it's indiscriminate thought and indiscriminate action but it's a shortcoming that society blesses it's like oh wow you're busy you must have a lot going on but you could be busy doing all of the wrong things and i think what kelly and i are here to say is if you're busy still trying to figure out how to connect platforms and still trying to figure out the tech stack that's already been figured out for you you really just need to focus on your mission your message and getting it out there to the world Exactly. And I'm honored. Like to, for our company to be part for No Glass Ceiling to be partnering with Kajabi is just really amazing. And I'm super excited about that. So we're we're going to have a lot of links. We have some really amazing bonuses and surprises for people. And you're gonna be speaking at the event. Yeah. And I, 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 I can't even believe it. I'm so pumped. I know. It's gonna be amazing. So you're going to have this really incredible opportunity to meet Jay Cron in person. He's going to be not only uh, first of all, can I just tell you, he is funny. He is super, super smart. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just to be great. clear, when we said we were going to do this, we had talked about setting the bar so low that I could trip over it, and now you're giving them <laughs> expectations. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Listen, I know you can rise up. Yeah. You're the president of Kajabi, for God's sakes. But seriously, I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. Uh, I've known Jay Cron for years. He is a stellar person of integrity, which you all know. That is the heartbeat of our company. And um, I'm excited to be able to share him with you so that you can really hear how you can take your company from where it is right now, whether you're in the build stage, the growth stage, the scale stage, or the profit stage, and be able to leverage your time. You literally get to buy back time. And they are not only just a tremendous sponsor and sponsoring our cocktail party, so thank you for that as well. Yeah, don't read into it. Me, cocktails, party, sponsor, that was a total accident. Yes, that's okay. Uh, but I really appreciate you know all of your support and our long-term strategic partnership, right? Because it's not just about one event. It's about a long-term strategic alliance with the right people. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm well, really and, excited and That's about one that. thing, just so you know, that from a core value perspective, that's where Kelly and Kajabi, we could not be in more alignment. That really the only metric we care about, which as a technology company, we could measure metrics on everything and anything all day long. The only metric that really matters to us is customer success. That if you're coming into our world, all that we care about is that you are more successful as a result of interacting with us. So that's one of the reasons we're most excited to partner with Kelly because that's the perspective they come from. This is truly an organization as a whole that is committed to making sure you're successful with as few headaches along the way as possible. I can't tell you that online entrepreneurship is easy and effortless. Odds are you may have bought a course that probably told you that at some point, but what I can tell you is it's beyond worth it fulfilling and the success is there for you to take. Yeah, thank you for that. So I wanna shift gears for our final question and just share, can you describe a time uh, where you just really had to like break through this barrier or overcome the greatest challenge as a powerhouse CEO? What was it and how did you break through? So I would actually say that I will use a comment that Dave Wentz, CEO of USANA, they're a multi-billion dollar company. Um, he was with them for 24 years and they experienced 23 and a half years of quarter on quarter growth, which for a publicly traded company is really, really tough to do. And one of the pieces of wisdom that he shared that I think is something that's come up habitually in my executive leadership career is it is never a good time to make the right decision. And you're going to face a lot of these moments, especially as you step into the CEO role, where you're going to be like, oh, wow, that's a tough one. Oh, wait, it's still on me. i got to make that call. So it's really something where I think learning to trust your instincts, learning to trust your intuition is going to be critical. And if you feel that your instincts and intuition need a bit more of a, a guiding light or a, you know corralling because you're all over the place, finding a coach, finding a great mentor, you really can't out ROI that type of a decision. But for me, it's always been those moments where it's like, I really don't want to make this decision, which is almost always an indicator that it's the right decision and the one I need to make. That's so right. it could be something as small as, you know, gosh, are we going to add more hypey oriented language into a marketing campaign, knowing it'll drive up the front end conversion, but bring in a less qualified buyer, which, you know, we ask those questions every time we're building marketing funnels. 
all the way into organizational shifts or the type of things that Kenny and I talk about often, which is how do we continue leading in a way that is totally authentic but serving the market before serving ourselves? And that mentality of it's never a good time to make the right decision comes up over and over again. Yeah, that's really smart. I mean, we base all of our decisions on thinking like a customer. And it's a long game. So what is it going to, you know, there are a lot of short-term games where you can make a hot profit. And, and, you know, how does that impact the business on the long haul? And that is where really I see a lot of people, businesses go out of business because they're playing that short game instead of playing it for the long haul and doing business the right way. I'm so excited and thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for being here in your own headquarters, for allowing me to come in and, oh, and spend this time. Absolute pleasure. Only a decade in the works and uh, a lot more to come. Yes, absolutely. So until next time, we will see you. Thank you for joining and listening in to Jonathan Kronstedt, Kajabi, and Powerhouse CEO.